Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. When God does something, He knows what He's doing. And I am grateful that uh, He's doing something. And my brother, Harley Coulterman, it's so good to see you. And I do hold you responsible for this, you and the Lord. <laughs> oh, it's really great to be with you, Randy. Uh, it's been a lot of years that we've uh, known each other. Yep. Uh, since my sister introduced us to, together those years ago. And um, it's been a fantastic, uh, it's been fantastic really to see how the Lord has built that relationship, you know. I probably, I mean, this some of what you're saying this morning is probably the first time I heard kind of the capsule of the story, <laughs> but I had uh, really no idea that this is what happened out of that facts or phone calls that followed it. But uh, God is amazing and I love that scripture. Yeah. Because it's the truth. <laughs> if God doesn't build the house, we're finished before we start. Yeah. Or it's even worse, and we're successful on our own. <laughs> and that leads to pride and arrogance yeah. and bad things. And, and instead of God building something that's His, it's man building something that really God doesn't really want to have much to do with. Yeah, I guess we've seen a few cases like that, yes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you you mentioned your sister. Um, I am grateful to you and your family because your sister and your brother-in-law, uh, Bob and Gloria, uh, they taught my children. Yes, and, they uh, did. Uh, what a blessing! Uh, our uh, our lives have been intertwined for a long, long time, and God has been faithful. Yeah. Uh, you're pastoring these days in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I would love for you to share with our audience about. First, the pastoral work that you do, because it's my opinion that, you know, Christian television is wonderful. I, I love media outreach, but a lot of people are confused, in my opinion. Uh, God works through the local church. Media is media, but it's the local church where, where families are touched and changed and lives are built and and God works through the ordained local church. That's his methodology. Yes. Yeah, I love Christian television too. I mean, when we got saved, uh, a lot of our feeding came from Christian television. I can remember when Marilyn Hickey and um, uh, several others were doing like 15 minute programs. I don't think that's ever heard, of, I don't think that's heard of anymore. But we could watch those 15 minute segments before we went to work and there would be, they'd do them back to back even uh, sometimes. And uh, we kind of cut our t teeth on the faith message and just, uh, you know, things that God was sharing through these brothers and sisters on television. So I'm really, really, really grateful for Christian television. But, you know, I guess the reality is, is you can love Christian television, but that brother or sister who's on the program is probably not going to come to the hospital and pray for you. That's right. Uh, probably not going to visit you when your kids are in trouble uh, or when you're feeling down and discouraged. And, um, you know, much as we could hope that they care and are praying for you in some kind of general way uh, and maybe even have a prayer line, uh, there is a place for the local church. And... Um, uh, the question is, how should that look? I mean, that's the bigger question, really. Yeah. And in, in your capacity as a pastor in a local church, how do you envision Christianity being done? How do we do church right? The reality is, I think we'll be judged by the book, and we should go back to the book to find out what is church. And I guess you discover pretty quickly it's not a location, and it's not a building, and it's not an organization and it's not a lot of things that maybe people consider to be church, but it really is the people. It's the called out ones is the church. And when you look at church that way, uh, then it can give you a different perspective of maybe how what we call church could be done. And um, I guess what really kind of stuck in my spirit from those years that we kind of began this journey is that somehow we needed to do what Jesus said to do and leave the, leave the rest not done, or at least to try to untangle ourselves from those kind of things. And it's been kind of a journey in doing that. And we're supposed to make disciples. With, in, in real bona fide church work, in a way people come, they're taught and trained, 
and then sent out. And they're equipped to carry this message of what changed your life yeah. and my life and their life. Right. They then share that message with others so that lives continue to be changed. Yeah, but that's a little messy. You yeah. Know? It's kind of like doing life together. You know, we did some pretty radical things and we got saved, probably both of us. I, I don't yeah. know that we would have been at the top of the church list people, you know. <laughs> for, for one thing, we didn't look like church people too much That's at, right. in those days. That's didn't dress like them either. And uh, so I imagine we were kind of a challenge for the leadership that, uh, uh, to whose care we were entrusted. The, the Jesus Freak era, um, the Jesus Revival that took place in, you know, the late 60s, early 70s, it was messy. Mm -hmm. It was weird. Uh, God was moving among His people and He was having His way. People were being changed. We were changed. But the concept of the church has not been radically altered. God still wants to, the call is the same, to go out and make right. disciples. Yeah, absolutely. It's not to build big buildings, although I don't have a problem with big buildings. It's not to have, you know, mega churches. I don't think, although I don't care if people have mega churches, that's fine, as long as disciples are being made, as long right. as sinners are called to salvation. And it's not changed into something less than a radical change in individual lives. God, right. God doesn't want us to stay the same when He comes to get us. Well, success is kind of relative. It uh, depends on what you look at as success, but what Jesus said with success is if we fulfilled His commission, and that was to make disciples. And uh, any time that you, any time that I think about discipleship, I, I think about relationship. And usually relationships are a little bumpy and sometimes pretty messy. You know, whether it's relationship in your family or relationship at your workplace or relationships at your church, uh, it becomes really apparent that it's pretty difficult, like for instance in church, to have a relationship with the back of somebody's head. But really that's mostly what you see of the person <laughs> uh, for some minutes during a week time meeting. and. Um, it's not really kind of doing life together. It's just kind of meeting together on that weekly basis. And so I think there's a lot to be said for developing relationships that are meaningful, having some accountability, um, developing a tr uh, some kind of transformational kind of thing that actually changes lives. Uh, obviously through the power of the Holy Spirit, we, I can't transform anybody. I've tried a lot of times and it hasn't worked very well. That just frustrates everybody in the process, doesn't right. it? Right. So, and along the way, you know, you just kind of learn, I guess, how to have some relationships that are meaningful. And um, it just becomes apparent that maybe it's a lot more important what happens outside of the meeting setting than what happens inside. Now, you know that. Uh, Several of my children are involved in local church ministry, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to have to take a break. But when we come back, I would like you to issue some, some words of wisdom to young pastors who are struggling with what it takes to be effective in the local church. And I, I think that there's probably a lot of pastors who will be blessed and benefited by the information that you will share.